I'm Alexandra Musavisade, and I head up the uh, Prosperity Index team here at the Legatum Institute. And uh, with me here, I have uh, Carrie Brown, who is Professor of Chinese Studies and Director of the Lao China Institute at King's College. And we're delighted to have you here. And uh, we are going to look at uh, more closely about the, the um, dispersion between the reality and perception in China. And if you could maybe cast some light on where you think China is today, and given the uh, potential slowdown in growth going forward, where you place China in the sort of next five to 10 years? Mm. Well, it's pretty clear that China's going through a really, really tough transition. And I think that was always expected. I mean, leaders and economists in China have been talking for a decade about, you know, the march towards middle income status. So that's likely by 2021. And, you know, per capita GDP, well, today it's about 10,000 US dollars, maybe by 2021. 14, 15,000 US dollars. So, you know, that's middle income status. And yet you've got a system where there's there's no real sign of political reform, uh, as we would understand it. So it's slightly kind of, um, you know, unbalanced. You, you've got reforms in terms of making markets and trying to reform state enterprises. You've got creating non-state you know, sector as a major part of the re sort of economy. And yet you've got this sort of um, static politics at the moment the Chinese government is you know sort of fairly harsh on any form of dissent and it seems very very contradictory so I think what we can say at the moment is is this a period of simmering kind of tensions before one thing you know that could change is big political reform uh, or we could see almost like a kind of you know Soviet Union scenario anything's possible at the moment. And what do you think this, the, the end goal is for the Chinese government? Where would they like to see themselves in five to ten years? Well, they've set out two centennial goals. So the first one is to, by 2021, be middle income status. So that's 100 years after the foundation of the Communist Party in 1921. And then in 2049, 100 years after the foundation of the People's Republic of China, you know, this idea of perfecting mm -hmm. democracy with Chinese characteristics. Uh, I mean, the vision of the Chinese government is always, and the vision of the Communist Party is to create a rich, strong country. Uh, and that's, you know, what uh, gets public support. It's not about Marxism, Leninism. I mean, that's the ideology of the elite, uh, the 3,000 people that run the country. They have to kind of sign into that and believe in that. Uh, but the Chinese people, uh, on the whole, probably are no more nor less ideological than any other people. But they do want a rich, strong country because they have an historic memory of China being weak, bullied, you know, the kind of century of humiliation, as they call it, up to 49. So that's what they sign up to. If the government has public support, it's talking within that framework, not really talking about perfecting socialism or building the primary stage of socialism, which is the more sort of, uh, you know, kind of official statements about where they're going. But if the population and the government is somewhat aligned, the role of propaganda in China, you know, the, the way that the Chinese government uses that, what is, what is your view on that? Well, propaganda is a somewhat sort of loaded term. They call it publicity. <laughs> uh, they did, you know, change the terms, uh, I think about 10 years ago, it used to be propaganda um, section of the party. I mean, it's not a ministry in China. It's, it's a section of the party. The party has a propaganda sort of committee, basically. And, you know, the head of that sits on the Politburo, mm -hmm. a man called Liu Yunxian. So, so, you know, the pub publicity, getting the message out, is, is important. It's um, as important as getting the message out in any system. You, you know, they want to uh, communicate the reasons for their policy. Um, what that means in terms of public belief? Well, you know, as I said earlier, people believe in a rich, strong country. Yeah. Do they believe, you know, in the kind of mission of the party to create a sort of perfect socialist state by 2049? Um, I mean, probably not. But I mean, it's really uh, the main function of propaganda, I think, in China is to, you know, get people's emotions enlisted in the functions and the kind of mission of the party and to you know, maintain stable development. And if now economists are spending a lot of time trying to figure out whether this is going to be a, a soft landing or a hard landing, if we, if we face a situation where it's a hard landing and all the bad scenarios unravel, how do you think the Chinese government is going to react to that? Well, loyalty in China amongst the public towards the system and the government and the parties is, is something you can quantify. And um, 
it, it's called GDP growth. <laughs> so uh, once upon a time, that loyalty was 10%. Uh, this year, it will be 6.8%. Mm -hmm. One day, it may be um, 1%. Well, once it's zero, there is no loyalty. I mean, people uh, in China, I don't think have profound, I mean, I really don't think they have profound loyalty to any system. I mean, they're pragmatic, like people are going anywhere. And once the system doesn't deliver, I think that they will be very, very fickle. If you think of the Shanghai Stock Exchange being a metaphor for this, of public sentiment, I mean, I don't know what surveys really can show in China, because it's it's an unknown place, really. The government surveys, but it keeps people's, you know, sort of that information very tightly controlled. So, you know, there is a question about what we really know about the kind of, you know, the inner lives of Chinese people and their opinions. But when we look at the Shanghai Stock Exchange, we have at least 33 million people um, you know, in, in investing on that. And we know that those people are very fickle, um, that those people are high volume traders who have no loyalty towards the companies that they invest in and have no loyalty particularly to faith in the market mechanisms in China, but do believe that the government has the obligation to intervene when they are losing money. <laughs> so they believe in intervention, they believe in government responsibility, uh, they believe, you know, that they, uh, that, that, that I don't think that they believe in the sustainability of this kind of market system, uh, but they just want to see quick returns. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly the same in the political realm, as long as the party is delivering tangible increases so that tomorrow is always better than today, people will be happy. And when tomorrow is the same as today, then all bets are off. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.